Guys, we made it. We have went through every Studio Kiss album, track by track, ranking them up and down from the beginning to the end. And finally, it is time to rank these albums in this tier list. And we have You Wanted the Best, the absolute best, the top of the top. I was going to do album rankings one through all of them and it was just too hard so i made these tiers you wanted the best king of the mountain albums that i love that are great but they're just not the top bill somewhere between heaven and hell albums i do and don't like right in the middle burn bitch burn albums i never go back to but maybe I have a couple songs here or there that i like rock bottom the lowest of the low my least favorite kiss albums and without further ado let's wrap this kiss review series up and let's kick this off with carnival of souls the little 90s bastard child stuck between revenge and psycho circus and what a great way to start somewhere between heaven and hell this is an album that i don't think is terrible i know why people hate it I don't think this album is amazing and I know why people love it. I think it's a heavy album. It's a good one. And this is the album on this tier list that I put on start to finish. I don't usually pick songs here or there. I like the album top to bottom. Nothing standing out huge. Nothing egregiously bad. Right down the middle. What a place to start. Bringing us into Psycho Circus. Bringing the band back together. Getting them all back. Some people love it. Some people have nostalgia for it. And for me... That is a burn, bitch, burn. And again, that doesn't mean I just absolutely hate the album. There's some songs I like on this. If you checked out my review series, you know there's some I like. But a lot of this album kind of seemed shoehorned in fan service for the money in the tour. Didn't pan out as well as I would have hoped. Burn, bitch, burn. Taking us to Dress to Kill. The final studio album before they broke onto the scene with Alive. And this album, straight to You Wanted the Best. This meets the production quality that they would want. This met the energy that a young Kiss had. This met all of that stuff into one album, leading into some great songs that sounded even better live. Dress to Kill, fantastic. Great first edition to You Wanted the Best. And we're going right to the most divisive album, potentially, on this tier list, and that is Dynasty. Some people... Grew out of Kiss at this point. Some people, this is their first tour. Where does it fall? Dynasty for me, somewhere between heaven and hell. Now, I grew up much removed from Dynasty. I wasn't there when it happened. I'm sure if I was a diehard Kiss fan and this came out, I would have been a little disappointed. But being able to look back on it, yes, there are some softer songs, but there are some fantastic, straightforward rock songs on this that I do enjoy. A couple clunkers, a little bit selling out for the money. But it has some solid performances in here. Somewhere between heaven and hell. And speaking of hell, hotter than hell. And this one might get me some scorched heat here. But it's going right down the middle. I love the songs on this when they're put on alive. But the production of this album, other than one or two songs, does not fit. It is atrocious. It sounds horrible. And it really takes away from the songs. But the songs themselves are great. And again, on alive, perfect. And outside of one or two songs on this album... I never visit the studio versions because they just sound so bogged down. And like I said, Dynasty being the most divisive, I would say this is number two because I have found this album has some die hard fans. And for me, don't kill me, but I'm putting it at King of the Mountain. I love this album. This is my B-tier album. I think it's great. I like the vibe of it. Coming off of Unmasked, not a fan. This is one that, again, if I was there when this came out, probably would have been pissed. But being able to look back on it as someone who didn't grow up with it and just listening to it, I think it has some fantastic songs. I like putting it on start to finish. And this is one that I throw on casually and just enjoy the shit out of. Music from the Elder. Going to Destroyer, you wanted the best right to the top. Where else would that have gone? Seriously, where else would that have gone? Destroyer. There's nothing I can say about this album that hasn't already been said. I have so much nostalgia for this album. I love the shit out of Destroyer. So I'll just gloss right over it because Hot in the Shade is squeaking into somewhere between heaven and hell. And that's because there were so many tracks on this album, you could have had two albums. And half of that album could have been King of the Mountain, and the other half could have been Burn, Bitch, Burn, or even Rock Bottom. So many tracks 
that you get a good flow of good song, bad song, good song, bad song, that it ha it is the epitome of somewhere between heaven and hell. Their final studio album, Monster, and I know people who love this album, I know people who hate this album. King of the Mountain, baby. I think if you like straight, hard rock kiss, this album is hard rock kiss. It's not my favorite album, but it is not bad at all. You throw it on on a drive, you'll have a good time with it. There's nothing here that's going to be out of the ordinary or ballad or too heavy or too cringe. It's just a good hard rock album. And its predecessor, Sonic Boom, right behind it, baby. I love Sonic Boom. I used to not like this album at all. I used to even like Monster better than this album. But as I've grown, as I've gotten older, and especially doing this review series, Sonic Boom has grown Again, it is just straightforward Kiss. You get what you get with it. If you like Kiss, you'll like this. Great album, King of the Mountain. But I think Psycho Circus is getting a little lonely down here. And lick it up. Squeaked into Burn, Bitch, Burn. And that's because the first three songs on this album are pretty good, solid songs. But outside of the first three songs, this album has nothing for me on it. It was one of the worst reviews I think I did on this channel because I just didn't have much to say about it. Go check it out because the best I can do on this one is a burn bitch burn to be completely honest. But an album that is not going to be that low because it's going right to the top baby is Love Gun. I've made no secret about it. I'm a 70s kiss guy. That is my era. Destroyer rock and roll over Love Gun. That is my era. That is my favorite kiss. I'm one of those. I know you got your 80s heads, your 90s heads. You got different eras and that's what makes kiss fandom so cool you have so many different times i am mid to late 70s kiss no doubt it was going to the top love gun the peak of the band the biggest they'd ever been on top of the world fantastic creatures of the night the album that many wish would have followed up dynasty that they think could have got them on track and that is squeaking into king of the mountain they could have went somewhere between heaven and hell and before this review series this would have been between Burn, Bitch, Burn and Somewhere Between Heaven and Hell. I was not a fan of this growing up. It took a while to grow on me, but when I sat down to do this review series, I had such a fun time with this album. It's short, it's sweet to the point, and it packs a punch. And I think this would have got them right back in line after the Dynasty issues or Unmasked issues, and they had music from The Elder and all that. This is a return to form album. Good, it's heavy, it's solid. Taking me to probably my second favorite era of Kiss, and that is the mid-80s. And with that, we have Animalize, which I will be putting King of the Mountain. It is going right there. Fun time. It's got raw energy. I think if you didn't have Kiss slapped on it, if it didn't have all that hoopla about who they used to be, and now if it was just an 80s album that came out with a different title, different band, this would be a strong album of the 80s. And I bet it got overlooked a little bit because it is a Kiss album, but it is a strong album regardless who made it. King of the Mountain, and we go back to the start, the original album, and I am going to put that in B tier. It was going to be C tier, but I do like that it, sometimes you want that slow, dreary, raw sound. It has some good songs on it that aren't on a live. You have to kind of get other versions of it. I like this album. It's a good kickoff. Obviously, it doesn't have the punch that you would get on a live album, but solid songs. Not one that I visit too much unless I'm looking for specific songs that aren't on Alive, but great album nonetheless. Now we move to my favorite Kiss album of the 80s, and that is Asylum. And this one is the top of my list for King of the Mountain. When I was numbering these out, trying to get them the best I could as far as numerical ranking, this one was right on the bubble of You Wanted the Best and King of the Mountain. I love this album from the 80s. I think it is a perfect combination of energy and fun and raw aggression that you get from creatures of the night animalize that kind of era and the fun poppy side of crazy nights hot in the shade it is just the right 80s fit for me fun top to bottom i love this album to death it was right on the bubble and i almost put it in you wanted the best but there's one or two songs on it that don't really feel right to me it's gonna have to go down here but the majority of that album is phenomenal unmasked if you watch the review series and you heard me try and talk about this album, you can already figure out where it's gonna go. And Rock Bottom's getting pretty cold and someone needed to be there. There's not one song on this album I ever go back to. Every now and then, Talk To Me is fine, but just the style change, the 
pop. I just don't like the pop side for the whole album. It's it is I get no enjoyment out of this album. If you want to hear the worst album review of this whole series, it's probably that one because I could I was stretching to find things about it that are positive because I don't like to be super negative. But there's nothing I get from that album. Rock and roll over. You already know. You already know. You wanted the best. That's where it's going. The 70s Kiss Homer. You had to know it was going there. Such a strong album, such strong entries, many live staples, classic. And one that I found that other people find as a classic and a return to form is Kiss Revenge. Surprised me how much love they actually get. And this one is going to somewhere between heaven and hell. And before this review, it was Burn Bitch Burn. I did not like this album. I did not like Domino. Unholy was the only song I cared for. But sitting down, listening to it, going through everything leading up to that point, I get a lot of enjoyment out of Revenge. I like that difference. I like that style. A lot of good ideas, a lot of good concepts here. And it would, seemed like the right thing to do at that point for the band now that I went through it chronologically. That was the next step. It was a change. It was a darker feel. And I've grown to like that, and it might move up even further at this point. Who knows? We'll see what time will do. And last but not least, well, I guess it is least because it's not going to the top, Crazy Nights, and that is a burn, bitch, burn. Outside of one or two songs, maybe, I don't get enjoyment out of this album very much. It's not terrible, but there are some songs that I don't mind. It could easily go rock bottom if I sat long enough. But I do get a little bit of fun from it. There's certain kind of... It could be on in the background. It's a little energetic, a little fun. You get that 80s cheese. So it does have something to offer. But that's about it. Burn, bitch, burn. Crazy nights. And guys, we have wrapped it up. This has been the Kiss Studio albums from the beginning to the end. Every track discussed and every album ranked from their cover to the contents of the album put it down below what's your ranking what's your tops what's your bottoms make your own tell me what your favorite kiss albums are tell me what your rock bottom is i want to hear people's rock bottoms that's what i care about because everyone's going to have some different stuff there and they're going to have some different stuff at the top and that's what makes kiss so much fun it's a huge fandom and i can't thank this community enough the fact i just sit in a room and talk about kiss and i've got all these people who watch and communicate and talk and we're just a big fan base and that's what makes kiss so much fun as daunting as this review series was at the beginning i'm proud that it's over i'm glad we're done with it and i am moving on baby i am so proud that this kiss review series is done and i'm so thankful y'all were along for the ride if you did not watch the review series it's in a playlist on my channel subscribe hit the notifications all that good stuff guys i cannot thank y'all enough you guys are the best. Peace.